Thanks for joining us here today as we get started with our Adventures in Marketing webinar. So good to see everybody on here today. I'm just going to get us going. So um, I am Kathy Lancaster. I'm the Youth Services Coordinator at the Library of Michigan. Um, I have Katie here with me. I'm going to let you introduce yourself, Katie. Hi everyone, my name is Katie Rapley. Um, you probably have seen my Mishlib and TLM emails with like templates for various social media stuff. I'm the marketing and PR librarian at the Northfield District Library, and I also am an adult services librarian. So um, I've been where most of you probably are right now. <laughs> And um, Kelly Arlen Rembert was supposed to be joining us today. Um, she's the outreach librarian at the Southfield Public Library. And unfortunately, she had a last minute um, family emergency. Um, and so everything's okay. Um, but we're going to miss her here today. And Katie and I are going to be impromptu uh, <laughs> sharing of her slides. So uh, yeah. welcome, everybody. All right, so we're going to get started. Um, Kelly really wanted to do this great fresh marketing ideas section. So I'm going to take the lead on that here. And let me get my all my slides back in order. Um, so one way uh, to get kids excited about summer reading is just to really showcase your prizes. Kids love to get items and, you know, uh, we love to share ideas on how to um, promote those prizes. So one of the um, examples here, I'm going to actually escape this here, and is the Grand Ledge District Library has this fun unpacking video. So I'm going to hit play. Let me know if you can't hear it. Hello, everyone. Here at the Grand Ledge Area District Library, it's kind of like Christmas. All the summer reading prizes and decorations and other things have just arrived. So let's watch. Let's unpack it together and see what fun things we've got that we ordered. Let's see. Here's the packing slip. We're going to check things off as we go. Get some tape open here. Oh, these are some of the prizes. Oh, these look like they're the sea life squish. Let's open up one here. They are. Look, it's a little dolphin. Or we've got, there's a shark. Ooh, I like the turtle. That one's a cute one. I'm just going to pause it right there. We have the link to the full video in our slides. Um, but I think that's really just a fun way to kind of promote and tease in summer reading is coming uh, by using your prizes. Another way um, to embrace this idea, oops, and I went to the wrong slide, is um, to display those summer reading prizes um, in a locked plexiglass or using photos at your desk if you don't have um, a space to display the physical items. You can put out pictures on a display screen. Um, you know, this is kind of uh, almost the modern day version of, uh, do you remember when we were kids or when we first started in libraries, perhaps that we would give away the Pizza Hut coupons and bookmarks. <laughs> and so we would market those. I just, I just remember everybody so excited for that pan pizza. <laughs> um, yes. So displaying those prizes is a great idea. Another fun, fresh uh, idea is to make, make it a competition. So um, friendly competitions help to add another level to summer reading. If you have multiple branches, you know, which branch can get more signups? You could do a competition between your schools or even your school districts to see how many kids can sign up. Share that competition online, on social media, with posters at the desks, share it in the schools. So pictured here is one of the ice cream cones that Clinton McComb Public Library did a few years ago. Um, I think last year they did palm trees, but the way CMPL set this up was that every school got a cone, okay? And then when um, every week they ran their report, they were using Beanstack and they had pulled up the what school a kid, 
attend it, they would put a sticker on the ice cream uh, there to represent each uh, child that's um, signed up. So um, Clinton McComb Public Library gives the winning school a celebration party at, in the fall. Um, so the kids really want to win. Um, they start by promoting it in the spring um, and they use this as a competition motivation uh, at their school visits in May and June. So Kelly also recommends that we use human curiosity to your advantage. If possible, you know, get outside, make it noisy, make it big. Um, people just are always curious and they're going to want to come and say, you know, I heard I heard a lot of laughter or I see that big white tent on the lawn. Um, what's going on? What's happening? And that really increases your foot traffic to get people to stop and join in. The Southfield Library also hosts jazz and blues concerts outside in the summer. So they have a lot of folks that stop in just to see what's happening. And that's a great time to cross promote your summer reading. Kelly wants to remind you all to uh, make it fun. Think of ways to be noisy and be kooky and just embrace it. I know if you're a library that is kind of landlocked and you don't have a park nearby, you could probably partner with a community organization or your municipality uh, to, to maybe hold something outside there if you don't actually have the space for it near your library. Great idea, um, Katie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we all know getting the word out is difficult. And so I have a few ideas here to help. And one of them is pounding the pavement, making flyers, make them eye catching, uh, get them out anywhere you can. So if you have some heavily trafficked areas in your community, um, you can post them there and you'll be sure to capture your eyeballs. Ask your library volunteers to help them pass it out because uh, yeah, I know I'm just one person doing marketing here, so it's helpful when I get um, help. <laughs> uh, if you stop in a shop that's mm -hmm. in your community, ask them if you could hang up some flyers, add QR codes. Um, you could also uh, do something that... Um, calls back to one of your library services. So for instance, if there's a local pizza shop, you can have a flyer that talks about canopy for summer, uh, a summer reading activity, but it could be watching a movie during pizza time or dinner or something like that. Um, local shops are more likely to say yes than the big chains, uh, but still try it. The worst thing that can happen is they'll say no. Um, ask your staff, regular patrons to spread it by word of mouth. And um, I, I really love what Clarkston Independence District Library does with the uh, yard signs. So if you have the budget, you should create those. And with some reading sign up, they could take one home, put it in their yard. Um, you might have to go driving around to see who has them in their yard. I think Clarkston does do that. And then they reward people who put the yard signs up in their yards. But that's just another way to get people involved and engaged. Hey, Katie, mm -hmm. that just reminded me, too, of um, the Peter White District Library up in Marquette uh, yeah. for a winter reading program. They did flamingos on your, in the Ooh. snow. And so they gave out flamingos. Um, in the winter for the, you know, to attract winter readers a few years ago. And that was so much fun to see pictures and, and drive around and, and see um, households with flamingos in the, in the snow. I love that. I know, um, I think we might've done a summer reading passport one year at Southfield when I used to work there. I don't really remember. It was many years ago, but uh, doing a, a summer reading passport is another option that you can do to get people up. Great. And we're going to hear from all of you in a few minutes. Um, at the end, we're going to have some time for you all to share your ideas and your experiences as well. But we're going to um, keep going here with... 
Yeah. So online. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You you can as well as in person and using word of mouth, you can talk to yourself up online as well. So think local. Do you have a next door for your area? Is there a Facebook forum or group for your town? Uh, I used to work at Lion Township and they have multiple Facebook groups. So um, you you can make posts on your library page and then share them to the groups. That's another way to spread awareness. Make a Google update for some ratings. So if you claimed your business on Google and you um and you might add stuff to your Google My Business, uh, you can also do an update using that. Um, under the business profile manager, I don't know if they've updated that because they they made it a little different uh, recently. So you don't really have to log into anything now, I don't think. But uh, you would just add an update and add your image. Utilize your local mom influencers too. So I know there's some moms groups uh, around the area here in Northville. And I believe that there were some in Lion Township. There still are, I just don't work with it anymore. Uh, and use the little guide Detroit online. Um, they have highlighted a lot of submissions from various libraries that have thought to, to add their information there. Um, Kelly added that they highlighted Southfield Library a few times, and each time they did, they saw an uptick in new visitors for a few weeks afterwards. So if you can get the word out anywhere you're able to, especially for free, which, you know, for the most part online, using the social media platforms, you can do that. Um, get it to the public schools, charter schools, private schools. If you have contacts for homeschool homeschooling groups, use them too. Um, some of them you could you could even share with houses of worship that have kids programs. Think about your preschools and um, even assisted living centers because we know that a lot of the older adults who are in assisted living and independent living centers, um, they like to have socializing opportunities and entertainment and education and things like that. Uh, and then um, put it up in your kids area. I know we have a debate that goes on about how many flyers should you have up in your library. <laughs> Um, but make sure you capitalize on the real estate in the actual space where the kids spend time or their parents. You know, you want to you wanna have it where they're going to see it. I was just thinking back to a previous fresh, fresh marketing idea with the competition. We could, you could maybe even make a competition for multi-generational family participants um, at your library, kind of. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I know um, TLN uh, Adult Services Committee is going to have a spring workshop on intergenerational programming uh, in May, I think. So, you know, that's just another option opportunity to get more ages involved. Oh, TLN is the library network. <laughs> Thanks, Kathy. Yeah. <laughs> Um, also, things you can do in-house is to make summer reading bookmarks and just have your circulation staff add them to all of the books that are put on hold and are waiting on the hold shelf for people to come and pick up. You could even put them in movies. It doesn't really matter what format it is. Just have them tuck it in there somehow. Um, you can also send targeted emails uh, all about summer reading with reading suggestions for various age groups. So instead of uh, your normal email, you can send a special one that invites them to participate in summer reading, talk about the prizes, and offer suggestions. You can, um, if you don't use an app already like Read Squared or Beanstack or some other type of logging platform, um, think about getting one and then advertise that they can track online. A lot of people are used to using their phones and apps. So if you can make that accessible, they'll, they're already conditioned to use apps, they'll, they'll track on there. 
and you can also reward them based on uh, the tracking on the app. Some of the activities that you can make as part of the summer reading program are attending a library program so they can get rewarded for doing that, using a database and telling them how to get to it on the website, checking out a library of things item. If you have a makerspace, doing an activity in the makerspace, uh, attending a book club, it could, it could be anything almost. So um, you can even say, you know, if you check out a magazine, or an audiobook that they can count that as an activity. And then um, ask patrons to invite their friends and neighbors and family if they all live in your service community area. And just want to make sure I'm getting everything. With all of this, remember nothing beats word of mouth marketing. So definitely try to get um, any of your patrons to share with their friends in the same area. It's the best form of marketing, so it's worth mentioning more than once. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And we're going to, we want to hear your fresh marketing ideas too. So we do have the shared notes document in the chat and we'll be circling around to that later on, but we're going to move forward and talk about partnerships, uh, collaborations and outreach. Yeah. So I already, I already kind of touched on this, <laughs> but um, if you have flyers already made up, or if you can create a social media kit for your local media and just like hand feed them all of the information in a neat package that's they don't, so they don't have to do anything. You can just give that to them and then they can decide if they want to use it on their communication channels. And also having the printed flyers already done up with like a QR code on it and just pass those around and see um, if a local organization or business will put it up. That's the easiest thing to do. Um, don't discount uh, opportunities to partner with your DDA, which is your Downtown Development Association, if you have one. Um, your inquire with your Chamber of Commerce. Sometimes they have bulletin boards in your municipality somewhere and you can get your information added to those bulletin boards or even uh, their emails maybe. And um, see if you can get the library invited to community events that are hosted by others. So you can have a library presence. Uh, you can have a tent with a table set up and then have some items to give away or uh, inf and information on summer reading. And, and an opportunity. Even to sign people up for a library card. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, bring an iPad or a laptop and get people to sign up for summer reading and iPad, um, you can use that to get your library card too. Yeah, and then, uh, so for here in the city of Northville, we have a downtown area and we do have a square and also a park. The park is just behind the library. We don't own it, we just use it. We have to ask permission from the city, but, Think about the spaces that are available. Uh, a lot of the city events take place in the square, and we have actually hosted summer reading programs in the square. Um, I, I don't know if they invited us or if we asked if we could do it. So, you know, it's best to reach out and contact people, and the worst thing they can say is no. Um, also reach out to your local nonprofits because they tend to know everybody. <laughs> <laughs> especially your Rotary Club, um, the Boy and Girl Scouts, your any local friends organizations. We have the Mayberry State Park, so they have a friends group. Um, your local genealogy and historical societies and any other uh, groups where people gather for some cause. Um, try to get a stand at your local farmer's market. You don't have to be there every single week, but if you can get at least one or two dates, you can even do a story time while you're inviting the people visiting um, to join your summer reading program. You could do a story time. You could do some kind of passive program at the farmer's market, like coloring or uh, maybe some type of STEM activity. 
Um, also school visits, I'm pretty sure everyone already knows to do this. Uh, Southfield has a meet up and eat up group. Um, I'm not really sure all the details for that, but I know it happens on a regular basis. I think it's once a month. And Kathy said nature centers, yes, <laughs> yes. And then um, I know it's not always easy to have a relationship with your municipalities, parks and recreation department or community center, but see if you can get an in with them. Sometimes they have their own printed publications and if um, they can make an exception for you just during some reading, maybe you can get one of your bigger programs added to their uh, magazine or pamphlet or whatever they do. Or even like a QR code to um, your website of events. Yeah, another thing is there's a lot of local publications around the area. Um, for instance, I'm trying to remember the name of the one that has like a bunch of coupons in it. You can pay for an ad and sometimes it's just a quarter page and sometimes it can be a half page. If you pay for that, it's usually around $150 or so. Maybe your friends group would uh put the bill for it if you ask them um you can get your library information in the local publications too like for instance we have a northville today lion township has a lion today publication and then there's several other areas where they publish it as the city today um and then that one that i was talking about with like all the ads and the coupons i can't think of the name of it it starts with an m but um, there, if you have something similar, and the best way to find out is like to go to your local grocery stores because they often have those publications somewhere in the grocery store, and then they have contact information in in that document somewhere. Okay. So um, the. CSLP does have a PSA they release every year, so you can use that on your social media channels, and if you're able to, if you have access or if you can ask one of your colleagues to add it to the main page of your website, that's a great way to catch attention. Um, you can do press releases, and if you have never written a press release before, I'm happy to send you an example of one. It's really easy to do. Um, I know a lot of people don't have a background in journalism, but it basically covers the who, what, why, when, where, and how, and that's your press release. And it's always good to add in photos to make sure you credit who, who um, took the photo. And uh, if you can share it with like patch.com, because I know for a fact that there are people who look at those websites because when I worked at Lyon Township, I submitted an event to, um, it was one of the Metro Detroit websites. And they came to an event. They were like, because I asked them, I said, how did you hear about this? And they said, <laughs> I saw it on this website. And I was like, cool, all that time I spent submitting events online actually worked. <laughs> so um, Oakland 115, if you're in Oakland County, you can submit event events online there. You can submit events online to MLive. They have a an email address. You just send it right up to them. And they decide if they're going to publish it or not. Uh, so you don't really have control over that, but it's better to just throw it out there and see if it sticks. Um, the Oakland Press takes it, Michigan Radio, if you have a radio contact with someone already, maybe they'll talk about it briefly on air for a few minutes. I know you do have to pay for radio spots. Um, so if you have a limited budget, uh, maybe the, they'd be willing to do some kind of exchange in kind. Um, any of your local news stations, the Detroit News and Free Press, if you send information to the local editor, Sometimes they will put it um, in their their publications. We actually got invited down to the Detroit News. I think it was the Detroit News for um, one of their morning broadcasts about our local author fair. And it was all because I sent out a press release to an email. So that was pretty amazing. 
there's also um I know Kelly has contacts with her with the local media too, like the more broader metropolitan area. And one of them was they uh local four came to the library to uh record and cover the marching band, the local Southfield High School marching band in the library. So Kathy's gonna play that for a little bit. Take a look right now. Live pictures, the marching band at those high school football games obviously are so important. And look at inside the library. Have you ever seen a, a live marching inside band? Inside the library. This is supposed to be a quiet zone. Not tonight, folks. Inside your neighborhood. Don't they sound great right now? All right. Southfield A&T Marching Band has played for Vice President Kamala Harris, Governor Whitmer, among other state dignitaries. They just returned from Hampton University, where they attended the homecoming football game. Now, that band takes pride in its ability to speak through music. We'll be checking in with them throughout the half hour. Yeah, and don't worry if you're a smaller library. Um... It's better to put your information out there and see if there's interest than to not do it at all. Um, another option is to team up with other libraries. And this was, this uh, TikTok, I believe it's a TikTok, was done last year for bands, Band Books Week. And I can't remember who was responsible for it, this idea and then editing all of these recordings together, but they did a fantastic job. So we're going to watch that too. Happy Right to Read Week. This is a week to celebrate the freedom to read whatever we choose. Libraries support intellectual freedom and the freedom to read. This means that we encourage access to the books that you want to read. The books you want to read may not be the books someone else wants to read. Not every book has a person, but every person has a book. There's support for increasing access to materials at home in Michigan. Through the Michigan Right to Read campaign by the Michigan Library Association. The My Right to Read Coalition is dedicated to protecting the rights of all Michiganders to read. As well as opposing attempts to ban books from Michigan libraries. According to the American Library Association, A challenge is an attempt to remove or restrict access to materials based on the objections of a person or group. A banning is a removal of those materials. Not every challenge ends in a ban. For libraries, Right to Read Week is a celebration of the resilience of libraries, librarians, and readers. Libraries are known for our welcoming and inclusive approach to helping people access information. Show your support for the freedom to read by donating to the Michigan Right to Read campaign. Or by visiting the website mirighttoread.com. So, you know, I, I could... Oh, yeah. Go ahead, Kathy. I, I was just going to say I could totally see people teaming up with um, your library cooperatives or with your other regional libraries on on presenting a similar promotion for summer reading. Oh, definitely. It And it could be a statewide thing like this. This was I'm pretty sure um, w someone just reminded me that Madison Roberts from Grace A. Dow Memorial Library organized this. So it was initially her idea. And then uh, we got other contributions, uh, especially help from the Michigan Library Association and getting the American Library Association involved in the video. But we could definitely do this for summer reading since it's a national thing anyway. Um, but we could make it a statewide effort. Or if you don't want to get someone outside of your library involved, you can do your own video and just have all, all well, any staff that's willing to participate. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Or, or adventure, you know, film some yeah, adventures right that you're all having. Week. This yes. is a week. And welcome to, to South Hope all... oh, they want it to play all the videos. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so in the slides, there's a link to Canva templates um, because it's me and I love to share pre-made things. I also shared these with CSLP, so it'll be part of their uh, packet whenever they end up releasing all of this. But in the link that I'm sharing, I'm pretty sure I shared the right one. Jeff Milo also uh, has created some templates too, so shout out to Jeff. Uh, so in that 
template. It's um, stuff that I did using the CSLP branded images and also Jeff added some options in there too. There's also a link to a Google Doc with some pre-written posts. It's not a lot and you can add some in there if you like, um, but you can copy and paste those too for when you schedule your, your social media posts. Did Katie, you it, to say something, Kathy? Yeah, it did lock out. So it, it locked out? Yeah. Okay. I'll make sure to fix that link here um, yeah. in a little bit. Because I was going to do a quick screen share. I don't know if you want to do oh, one, but sure. these are two examples on the right of a couple of the pre-made posts that Katie has made. And as she mentioned, it will be a part of the Collaborative Summer Library Program's uh, social media toolkit, which is coming out soon. Yeah, I'm not, uh, I think it's because I made it into a template. Um, oh, there we go. The old one had worked, I thought, but that doesn't work anymore either. So we'll get that fixed okay. for everybody. There. It's ugly, but that's, there it is. All right. Um, okay. So yeah, the only reason why I bring this up is um, because you want to use whatever works best for your community. If you have an older uh, population, you might want to stay fixed with 2D images and especially uh photos of like library staff and patrons. Those are always super successful. I know it takes some buy-in. Uh, so, I mean, you can you can ask, I sometimes approach patrons in the library. I'm like, hey, my name is Katie. I work for the library. I do all the social media. May I take your photo for our social media accounts? That's all you have to do. If they say, yeah, then you can do it. And if they say, no, move on to the next person. And um, short form video especially is very effective. And I don't know if all of you are familiar with the Fowlerville District Library TikTok account, but uh, Storm over there just kills it every time that she does a video for that. So if you need inspiration, I often go to her, <laughs> her, account, her library's account to steal, borrow ideas and um, and the reason why it's so effective is because short form video captures our attention span. And a lot of attention spans these days only last anywhere from three to 10 seconds. So if you can stay within that time frame, I know three seconds is kind of silly, but 10 seconds to 15, you, you will get a lot of attention. And also whatever hashtags that you use, they have to be popular ones too. So that they get more attention too. Um, let's see. Oh, also monopolize on customizing memes. So the meme can be like a well-known one, but if you can make it relatable to your library or summer reading, then that's great because people want to laugh. They want comic relief and they want something to enjoy and share on their own um, Facebook page that'll make other people laugh. Uh, so you can use the regional partner hashtags from CSLP here and also the Library of Michigan for my summer reading and Library Adventures, which I believe is also a CSLP uh, hashtag. And then tag the CSLP platform at any time. I have the links there. I'm sure Kathy um, would like the Library of Michigan tagged in any of that too, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to, <laughs> but we love seeing it, so that's fine. Uh, the Institute of Museum and Library Services uh, helps support uh, our membership with CSLP through the Library of Michigan, so we're always happy to see what's going on across the state. Yeah, and then there's Facebook groups um, that you can join so that you can get in on the conversation and also gather some creative inspiration as well. Did you want to say anything about that, Kathy? Well, I'll just go in to add that there's about 10,000 people on the Facebook group for programming now for CSLP and they're your colleagues across the country. So tons of ideas and um, resources being shared there um, as well. Uh, libraries and summer food is very important 
um, lots of good resources in that group. It is not as active as the programming group. So um, just a reminder that the PSA from CSLP will be coming in April. So um, looking forward to that. It's usually about 30 seconds. And there's also typically um, a Spanish version of that as well. Uh, CSLP also produces a newsletter, so there are um, great ideas and marketing tools in that newsletter. You can sign up for that online. So we're working on a summer reading champion. Uh, I have a little inside knowledge, but I can't share yet. <laughs> and uh, we also have partnerships with Read with Jenna that uh, uh, part of the Today Show. And so there'll be a book list that you can pass out or use in newsletters and marketing um, to get folks into your library for some of the Read with Jenna books. And the Smoky Bear Reading Challenge is happening this year. You can use it anytime. Um, all the resources are online. You can use it right now, or you can wait till the fall, or you can even uh, you know, celebrate it for a week or two during the summer, whatever, however you want to use it. Um, also, a couple of resources just to remind you that the Mel Promotion Toolkit um, is available online to help promote e-resources. Um, and um, you can certainly um, look into promoting your summer reading and uh, summer resources using the Mel um, templates there. I linked a Canva tutorial because I know not everyone is a genius with Canva that Katie is. <laughs> so um, take a look at that. Katie always has these fabulous uh, pre-made stuff that she's been sharing with the library community here in Michigan. So we're very grateful for that. But there is a tutorial there to help you change out your logos and, um, you know, uh, put in your dates and all that good stuff. Also a reminder, it is adventure this summer. And of course we'd love to adventure using the Michigan Activity Pass. So uh, there's a link to all the map promo materials. Map has coloring pages, bookmarks, logos, all that great stuff on the Library Network website. So be sure to remember to use those in your marketing as well. And a quick little reminder that um, using CSLP does mean that we are agreeing to their rules of use. So you do need to use CSLP trademarks and their copyrighted material. You can see even on all of our slides here today, we've had, it's very, very small. It's not disruptive, the little CSLP official clip art um, that we are using. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. And they also have um, on their website in their store an ability to custom order items. Um, so if you want your library logo on a t-shirt, they can do a custom order for that. So be sure to check that out. And you can always ask for permission. I had a library, um, I think it was just a week ago, ask me if they could use Adventure Begins at Your Library as um, part of their mural that's going up on the side of their building. And, um, you know, CSLP immediately gave permission for them to go ahead and use that. So um, they're very open, just don't hesitate to reach out and ask. So now we have about 20 minutes and we wanna hear from you all. So there is a shared um, doc in the chat box that you can open up and let me show you what that looks like here if i can get out of yep so it looks like people are typing oh katie's gonna try to <laughs> share an active link because it wasn't active again so she's working on that um but yeah so we have a link to all the slides that have all the links so if you want those map resources or the mel templates those are all available through our slides and then we have these little boxes here that we want to hear from you we want you to put your ideas in there and share with us um so i'm going to be turning off uh the screen sharing in just a second but i wanted to give you a last chance to grab our emails if you have questions for kelly 
Katie or I. Um, if you just want to bounce ideas off of us, feel free to reach out. I know that Kelly is running um, a monthly Michigan PR uh, group. I think, Katie, you're a part of that. Yeah, yeah, when I can uh, attend. <laughs> Yeah. And so that is usually posted. The invite to that is posted by Kelly to the Mishlab L um, listserv. And it's just kind of a casual meeting of the minds. And sometimes they have presentations like how to use Canva um, <laughs> during those uh, monthly meetups. So please uh, don't hesitate to reach out. And I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen that we can all talk. And if you guys want to turn on your cameras and unmute, if you've got questions, if you got ideas, we'd love to hear it. And of course, we'd love to have um, your notes in our shared doc, because that will go out to all participants um, of this webinar. Also, <laughs> if you're a part of a consortium that has a committee or a group that meets or or maybe even just a communication channel for marketing and social media, the library network has one. Um, make sure you take advantage of that so that you can share ideas and ask questions of your peers. Oh, Kathy, there's a question. If we yeah. were just using the slogan, adventures begin at your library on a brochure, not an actual graphic from CSLP, do we still need to include the trademark logo next to the slogan? Yes, you do. It is a trademark slogan, so you do need to use that little TM there. And you're welcome, Beth. I'm happy to do that. I absolutely love sharing. All right, so come join us. What what haven't you heard today? What 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 can we help brainstorm with you? And would any be anyone be interested in doing a video? It starts right here, right now, I guess. <laughs> Maybe I will totally do a video with you. Yeah. That was Jocelyn for the record. Oh, I, I recognize her voice. <laughs> Gross Point Library will do one too, because we were a part of the one uh, that you showed, and it was really fun yeah. to do. And we did one before with MLA that was um, more focused on what the library offers beyond books. And so we, you know, different libraries talked about whatever, you know, the um, like we have a tool library or seed library or whatever, and um, and then the. We just need someone who can edit, which I can't do. <laughs> oh, I can do that. That's and no put it all together. It was it was fun and it does doesn't take a lot of time. All right. Just send me an Actually, email. Katie. I, there's no way I'm gonna remember this. Katie, I'm gonna make I'm gonna make a Google form right now. Oh, perfect. Okay, so anybody great. who wants to do or participate in the in the video will just need to input their info in this form. But it's gonna okay. take me a minute to create. So Awesome. Go on. Alex, did you have a question? Um, it was more uh, of an additional into that. So if if we you were saying that if we use the phrase um that like adventure begins at your library, we do have to use the trademark. Correct. So we we can't use the phrasing at all. Even if, if you do like different logos and everything else, we you can use, use it with the trademark and then you need um, permission uh, if you're alternating it in any way. It's been like, um, let me pull up the link. I think I had it in the on the slides too. They are working on a clearer way to read the rules of use. It's hopefully going to be voted on next month by the board um but there there it is you are a member oh, library thank you so you, because michigan pays for your membership so you sure. can use it but you need to include the trademark and then if if you're using the actual artwork or the actual slogans you can't manipulate those does that make sense 
Yes, it makes sense. Okay. okay. <laughs> we just needed I, to confirm because we're doing different logos, but we were planning on using the phrasing. So if we if have to trademark can. And everything, we just need to know the rules. That's all. Yep. Yep. And if you have any confusion about those in the chat, um, I can connect you to CSLP for further clarification. Mostly just the little tiny TM with a circle around it. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's, it doesn't even have a circle. It's just TM. What else, folks? Um, I guess as a recommendation for marketing, we were, we've been doing, um, book bingo for our adult side of summer reading for the last couple of years now, um, to get adults a little bit more involved. Um, and we've been doing like different activities because not all adults have time to read even four books to necessarily get a bingo in any direction. Um, so we've been including activities and uh, this year we're deciding to do a little bit more adventurous activities. So including um, our mango languages for language learning, um, including uh, going to see us at the farmer's market um, and different kinds of things that they can do uh, with our different databases or things that we have, um, like going to one of our programs or um, different interactions that they could do in the community um and then that also spreads the word of getting people to like get their friends to come with them to the farmer's market and oh why are you stopping to see the library etc cetera, etc cetera. kind of getting the word out in different ways we just had a conversation here yesterday uh, my colleagues and i about using library jargon in your marketing and what you want to do is you want to make sure that you're using words that your uh, patrons understand. So for instance, an example is, a lot of people don't understand what a database is. <laughs> so if you can, if you need like inspiration on how you should refer to it, ask a patron how they, what they think of it or how they talk about how they use it. I know it's a little difficult uh, because people also don't, sometimes understand what digital resources are when we refer to that. And we're trying to make it easier so that they understand what exactly we mean when we say database and digital e re digital resource. But <laughs> I mean, like when we refer to the stacks, people don't understand what the stacks are. They think of bookcases. So you just want to be mindful of the words you're using in your communications. Yeah. In to the public, we usually call them online resources, but since we're here talking amongst us, I was calling them online databases yeah, to yeah. encompass all. Um, but yes, we usually refer to them as like, oh, we have this in our online resources. It's something that we include. It's free to you. It's just one of many things we have. Let me explain that kind of situation. Perfect. Also, um, another idea, especially for social media, is to do a what's new post to a specific collection because people are always interested in seeing images of what's available to them at the library. So um, I know it's kind of boring to do sometimes, but it's a good idea to do it occasionally. Uh, it's just like a business posting their products online that piques interest and gets people um, actively looking at what you have. So I regularly post uh, carousels on Instagram for like what's just been returned to the library, what's new. And I do that for youth items, adult items, and occasionally teen. So you can always phrase it as, you know, need some inspiration for what to read this summer, take a look at these 10 books. What other Maybe, thoughts? Oh. oh, someone put local podcasters in here. That's pretty cool. I put the um, 
form in the chat, folks. So all the people, I know Marianne, Jocelyn, um, that mentioned wanting to participate, please go ahead and fill that out. And then I'm sharing the responses with Katie so that she can get in touch with you. I love that idea. Thanks, Kathy. So I'm looking at the notes, the shared notes, and I'm I'm seeing, um, you know, flyers in the little free libraries, um, senior centers for intergenerational programs. It's a great idea. What are some of the ways that you all connect with the older audiences in your communities to for marketing? Our biggest one is our community center, but I think that also is just convenient for us because of proximity. It's just adjacent to our building. I, I think we probably wouldn't enjoy as nice a relationship and uh, in reciprocity if we weren't so closely located together. But um, I know for outreach, because we are so busy and we don't have enough staff, it can be hard. Uh, to go to all of the assisted living centers. And a lot of them have recreational coordinators and everything. And that's not always something that you want to commit to on a monthly basis, just due to staffing and time. But that would be a conversation to have like maybe a once a year visit and maybe it has to do with somebody. I would say our biggest draw into our social media for our older patrons has been uh, actually to keep up to date on things that are going on for kids, specifically like their grandkids and things like that. Um, and then they end up finding out about things that are for them. Um, so they find out about uh, the yardners doing different things of like presentations or that we're having like a history presentation or all sorts of different things that we are doing, um, they end up finding out, but they're drawn in because they want to know like what's the newest thing that we're doing for their grandkids or whatever else. Um, and then because they find out from that draw in, they then end up sharing it and things like that. That's been our biggest pull in. I love that. Also, anytime you have an event in person at your library or out in the community, you can always do a little bit of a marketing announcement before you introduce your speaker or start your program. I know sometimes people have a little fear of public speaking, but you know, if if you're able to breathe through it and like share the information, because sometimes people just don't think about this stuff for themselves. Like you said, they're there for their children. But if you can make a little announcement that invites everyone to participate, even if it's at a story time, or if it's at a historical presentation for adults, just just take a moment to announce that it's open to anybody. I once brought a rotary group in um, into the library because they wanted to um, have some training on early literacy because they were doing some outreach and early literacy donations and and whatnot but we brought them in and gave them a tour and did a talk about our resources and we had quite a few people that as an adult they hadn't been in and if they didn't have children um they hadn't even thought to come in and they were just like i heard months later from a few of them that they were like it's so cool look what i've done with my library cards since i got it you know <laughs> um so really great opportunity to reach out to those organizations and clubs, even if they don't have children to, um, to bring them in, to invite them for a social evening or, or some sort of training or host a meeting at the library. Everyone's being very quiet today, but I see some good ideas going up in the, sh in the chat or not the chat, but the shared notes. Yeah, I know we we have done a few trivia events at like a local restaurant slash bar. So you could do like a summary 
summer reading themed trivia or um, maybe karaoke or something, if they already do that, maybe they would be open to it. Hey, I do the same thing at Millington when it's summer reading. Uh, when the month starts, it's the theme for trivia summer reading. So the, whatever the theme Perfect. is. So smart. <laughs> the the only like uh sensitive thing to think about is that a lot of the businesses they want to make money. So if people aren't buying <laughs> beer and food, then they might be less likely to have you back. So Jeff uh, mentions in the chat that they host a lot of monthly events at bars and coffee shops. So when they get to mid um, May or late May, they're taking the summer reading flyers to those events. That's a great idea. I also drop off our print newsletter to our local Starbucks. I, I asked for permission first, of course, and they let me put it in the cafe. A lot of the local breweries will often have like a community board or something along those lines. Um, so that's another opportunity cross promote. Um, and you could also invite invite like winemakers or brewers or, you know, your baristas at the coffee shops to maybe do um, a program at the library for you in the summer in, in exchange for some cross promotion there or donate. Um, maybe a hot cup of java for those adult summer readers or our teens. Uh, Jocelyn at Lyon Township, when I used to work there, I'm sure she's still doing this, but she got the local McDonald's to, to give coupons on bookmarks for summer reading, which I always thought was a awesome thing. All right, folks. Well, uh, we are about out of time. Uh, this meeting um, has been recorded, so we'll be sharing that out along with the shared notes and any ideas that were captured in the chat box. I'll include on that shared note doc, um, but um, I'm excited to see what comes of this video. You already have 14 people signed up, Katie. Might be something to post on the listserv. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> get some folks uh from around the state and um, yeah. i'm looking forward to seeing that awesome idea i'm excited i know i think some of the libraries did a library of things video a couple years back too i don't know what happened to it but that one was really cool too great well thank you all for coming today and um, looking forward to seeing what you all push out for summer reading. Thank you all Thank for your you. hard work. Thank you to Katie and to Kelly uh, for uh, jumping at the chance to present this webinar today. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Kathy, for inviting me.